Red light therapy. It is truly revolutionizing healthcare, literally as we sit here right now. A number of you over the last day and a half have actually come up and shared some of your stories. You know, we were together in Las Vegas last year where we did a, uh, uh, an overview and an open first really awareness of our red light therapy. But some of you have actually tried it out in the last year and have come up with some amazing results. And so that's the key element here is that literally as we're sitting in this room, red light therapy is saving a life. Red light therapy is improving a life. Somewhere in the world, military forces are using red light therapy in their conditioning. SEAL units, special forces for the United States Army, NATO pilots, Israeli defense forces, they're all incorporating red light therapy into their conditioning, into building endurance, recovery from their uh, exercises, rec and improving their performance. At the same time, we have young people at places like St. Jude having their lives saved with treatments relating to taking care of the side effects of cancer chemotherapy. Every major sports team in the world is now using red light therapy. Every NFL team has either a handheld or a light bed. Every NBA team, every World Cup soccer team, most collegiate athletic teams now are using red light therapy. It is truly the future of medicine, but it's actually becoming the present of medicine. Let's see. So the underlying aspect of you know, what is the mechanism of action for red light therapy. It's photobiomodulation. And to explain that, think of ourselves as warm-blooded plants. We turn color in the sunlight. We like sunny days. We need our vitamin D. And when you look at the mechanism of action within photosynthesis in a plant, photobiomodulation is almost the exact same mechanism within a human. We literally are absorbing the sunlight with all the ambient parts of the spectrum. But when you start to think about what is photobiomodulation, in the light spectrum, yesterday we heard a little bit about the infrared or the uh, uh, ultraviolet end of the spectrum dealing with ozone. Ultraviolet end is a cleanser. If we shift over to the red near-infrared end, now we're into photobiomodulation, 500 to 1,200 nanometers. And red light, again, it's everywhere. Uh, you know, if, if you watch Fox News, you've got the Tommy um, Copper ads that are on. They show little dots where you can wrap them around your, your uh, arm and things like that. Um, those are consumer grade. They are not what we call medical grade. Medical grade, when you start to really talk about photobiomodulation, is, is joules per centimeter square. If you can basically shrink the light spectrum and focus it on the 500 to 1200 nanometers and you amp up the, the dosage or amp up the intensity, you are approaching the medical grade part of photobiomodulation. So think about it as Finding here. So, since we last talked, photobiomodulation has really made it into the mainstream of medicine. We have literally 70 articles a month now being published dealing with photobiomodulation. Clinical studies, animal studies, human studies. We also have currently 200 human studies currently registered with the National Institutes of Health that are being conducted as we speak. So it truly is becoming not just the future of medicine, it is becoming the present of medicine. So what is photobiomodulation? What does it really do? Think of the fact that we have 32 trillion cells in our body. And within each of those cells, there are literally thousands and thousands of mitochondria. 
Mitochondria are kind of like the energy cells within the cell. It gets, takes nutrients, it actually takes the sunlight and turns it into, a, uh, into the energy that drives the cell. And within each one of those mitochondria, at the subatomic level, we now start looking at what we call the electron transport chain. Literally, it's like four different subatomic components, and there are thousands and thousands of them within each of these mitochondria. And so, if all goes well, nutrients and sunlight comes in, different ions and molecules and, and atoms change, swap out, and then the final bit literally is almost like a, like a literally subatomic uh, water wheel that spins, and that drives cellular function, so it drives the mitochondria into the cellular function. When we are, get a disease, when we're injured, when we get older, that four-step process closes up. And that's called inflammation, because when it closes up and the atoms can no longer move, it swells. At the, again, subatomic level, but that's inflammation. So what photobiomodulation does, what they've found, the way it works, is if you direct enough energy, enough dosage, joules per centimeter squared, in the right part of the light spectrum, red, near infrared, it ungums that. And when you're dealing with that kind of level of subatomic activity, multiplied thousands of times within the electron transport chains, thousands of times within the mitochondria, trillions of times within the cells of our body, it doesn't take that much to ungum. And that's what photomyomodulation is all about. So, the other part to this is that 80% of what ails us, what ages us, what hurts us, what uh, gives us the you know, creaky joints and, and all the rest, 80% relate to some aspect of cellular function. So therefore, photobiomodulation does one thing really well. It ungums the electron transport chain, but as a result, it can literally address any number of medical conditions. And so we're going to be talking about a few of those because it's been, since Las Vegas last year, we've had some amazing progress and some amazing uh, endorsements and amazing progress in general. So, tale of two patients. In the first instance, a pope. In the second instance, an amazing athlete, athletic uh, star from the Olympics. So in the case of Pope Francis, last year he fell and really wrecked his knee. I mean, he literally shattered his knee. And he was, the Vatican actually kind of covered up for a while, but ultimately he was, couldn't, couldn't walk. He was in a wheelchair. And he was concerned about going under general anesthetic and getting, um, getting some sort of surgery. So enter one of our colleagues in Europe who knew the Vatican physician. And he provided a photobiomodulation device to the physician who started treating the Pope. And after only a couple months, the, the different parts of the broken bone started to fuse and the muscle came back and the Pope started going through physical therapy and over to, and again the, the uh, item in the middle there, that's the Italian device that was being used. And the beauty is he's walking. And so what happens a couple months ago, he goes to Budapest and decides to uh, have a special ceremony at one of the main churches in Budapest to honor Adam Mester. Uh, Andre Mester is the uh, inventor or discoverer of photobiomodulation. We'll talk about that in a minute. But he, the main thing is, is he, the Pope endorsed <laughs> PBM. 
um, you know, he, he embraced the Bible, he's now embraced the light. And so it's, uh, and this is a big deal, because to have somebody of, of world renowned who can say that the only reason I'm walking today is because red light therapy, photobiomodulation, healed my knee. I mean, that's huge. And we've never had a world leader be able to say that. And so in that special ceremony, he endorsed formally from his podium, endorsed PBM. He, he provided a special papal medal to uh, Adam Mester. Mester gave him a, a Hungarian-made uh, PBM device. So who is Andre Mester? Andre Mester was a brilliant scientist working behind the Iron Curtain. And in 1967, he was concerned about whether lasers, which had only been developed since 1962, might have caused cancer. So he takes a whole bunch of mice and, ha and he shaves them. And he applies the laser to them to see if they start to develop tumors or something like that. What he discovers is the mice that he was directing the laser on started growing hair real fast. And he called it biostimulation. But the key is, is that that's how PBM was discovered, shaved mice. And to this day, you probably have seen ads, especially on the internet and things, where you have these baseball helmets that you put on with, lined with LED lights to grow hair. And it does. It goes back to the roots of PBM. But Andre was a uh, amazingly brilliant scientist, but he had the misfortune of being behind the Iron Curtain. So that's why, even though this was discovered in 67, it did not come into the West until the fall of the Berlin Wall. So, so if you go on and go on to the like, National Institutes of Health and look at their libraries, all of a sudden there's this burst of PBM-related uh, research papers that show up in 91, because that's when finally it made it to the West and started going into the uh, general circulation among our researchers in the United States and in the West. But since that point, we have had over 100 million patients treated with, with PBM, with red light therapy. And in, during that entire period, there's been no documented side effect, period. Because it's a natural process helping a natural process. We're that warm-blooded plant that's getting this infusion of red and near-infrared light. And whether it is a uh, broken ankle, a, a sprain, a uh, just simply muscles sore from working in the yard, uh, all the way up through uh, neurological conditions and things, which we'll get into in a minute, you are getting your life improved. PBM heals. PBM helps with wellness. And therefore, it's starting to finally get some the traction it deserves. So the second one, and Abernathy is a absolutely stunning individual. Um, yeah, I'm going to wait on the video for a minute. Um, she holds two records. One is she's the oldest person competing in the Olympics. And secondly, she's the person who has competed in more Olympics than anyone else in the modern era. She's been in six. She's going into her seventh. She started out as a winter Olympian, as a uh, single woman's luge clocked at 138 miles an hour going down the, that ice uh, uh, tube. And she was called Grandma Luge. She was a, a pop hero. In fact, a, IBM, after, during the Japanese games, actually made her their spokesperson and won a Clio Award for their ads because she's just one of these most dynamic people. She's a, she's a cancer survivor. She's, just, she's also a, a, a born-again Christian. She, uh, she sings songs at churches. She's an amazing, multifaceted individual. So she turned 70 this last April. And she was a, uh, and she realized, you know, going barreling down the hill, a nice tube at 138 miles an hour is probably not a, something a 70-year-old should do. So after the last Winter Olympics, she shifts over to archery. And what she found is that the, the muscles that you use, upper body muscles, to launch your luge are almost exactly the same for pulling a bow. So she leapfrogged all the way. She's the number six ranked archer in the world right now. 
which is pretty impressive. But why she comes into our world? Last summer, she had a severe bout of COVID and she got COVID brain fog. And had she taken the, the pharmaceuticals that were being recommended, she would have been screened out of the Olympics. So she came to one of our trustees of the PBM Foundation, Dr. Bob Bowen, and he was doing a, a proof of concept study saying that if we direct red light into the brain, uh, we can solve and treat brain fog. He succeeded. And let's talk, let's look at the uh, video. While the COVID-19 pandemic has ceased to be a public health emergency, many patients continue to deal with post-pandemic complications known as long COVID. One such complication is brain fog, characterized by cognitive dysfunction and chronic fatigue. Systemic inflammation and vascular damage following COVID-19 are believed to hinder cognition. Unfortunately, there are no therapeutic options available for the recovering patients. Photobiomodulation therapy, PBM, has shown promise in treating cognitive decline by boosting antimicrobial immune responses and reducing inflammatory cytokine damage. Interest has therefore shifted to using PBM for treating long COVID symptoms as it targets the underlying processes of the immune system. However, delivering precise PBM doses to targeted sites remains challenging. In a recent open-label pilot human clinical study, researchers from Shepherd University, University of Buffalo, and West Virginia University, USA, evaluated the efficacy of transcranial PBM, TPBM, and whole-body PBM, WBPBM, in treating long COVID-induced brain fog. A total of 14 patients who had experienced brain fog for at least five months were enrolled and divided into two groups, seven patients per group. Group 1 received TPBM treatments administered using a neuradiant LED helmet emitting light at 1,070 nanometers, while Group 2 received WBPBM with Novothor, a light bed with LEDs emitting lights at 660 nanometers and 850 nanometers. The subjects were randomly allocated to receive either PBM treatment and received a total of 12 treatments over a four-week period. They were evaluated pre- and post-treatment using a battery of neurophysiological tests and the WAVI Quantitative Electroencephalography QEEG system. The researchers found that both PBM therapies improved brain performance and resulted in significant improvements in neurophysiological test scores following treatment. Furthermore, the WAVI data of the subjects supported these findings by revealing increased brain processing speed and power following treatment. Additionally, the WAVI QEEG system was shown to be a practical and effective biometric for evaluating PBM treatments in real time in a clinical setting. These findings thus show that TPBM and WBPBM could improve clinical outcomes in patients diagnosed with COVID-19 brain fog and other chronic diseases. Oh, there you are. No, I got it. All right. So, the um, Dr. Bowen was trying to explain all this to me, and he said, you know, you don't have brain fog, but let me run you through the whole thing. So, the brain scan on the screen there is mine. And so, the WAVA, this, in this case, he put the uh, neuronic helmet on me for 14 minutes and ran me through the baseline tests, put on the 14 minutes, went to the other. So you can see for even a, a normal brain how much more brain activity happened after only 14 minutes of this kind of bicycle helmet kind of 
thing. And also what happened was he ran me through all the baseline tests that they mentioned on the video. Every one of my test scores doubled in improvement after those 14 minutes. Absolutely blew my mind, <laughs> literally and figuratively. And so uh, in the case of Anne, she used the light bed. So once again, as, as a, the PBM Foundation, you know, we are an honest broker. We're basically there to, uh, to basically curate, uh, I like to say, uh, aggregate, curate, disseminate uh, the, the, the most important research and, and applications within the PBM world and to then advocate it being a mainstream medical uh, treatment. So we have about two dozen industry partners that help us out. Neuronics from Philadelphia is one. Uh, Novathor, which is actually made up in Vermont, is uh, one of our other ones. And so that's the Novathor bid. Uh, and so she used that, and this is literally, this was the uh, competition where she came in uh, sixth uh, over in, uh, this was actually uh, in Germany. Actually, no, this was in Turkey. She's actually heading to Germany this week, so otherwise she'd have been here to talk about it. So with this, so out of 291, uh, it almost looks like a, you know, a modern day version of Ozencore, all these uh, archers lined up uh, in Turkey that she came in, uh, I said she came in sixth in, that, in this case. Uh, in team competition that just happened in the Pan Am Games uh, down in Honduras, she again came in sixth. Uh, but she's on her way to Paris, and we are actually, in the, as the PBM Foundation, are sponsoring her uh, run for the, her seventh Olympics. So it's a, a great honor from our standpoint to uh, help this amazing person. But the other piece to it is, here's a person who, if PBM had not existed, could not have competed. Now, another interesting piece, which was referenced in the, uh, in the video, just last week, one of the more promising brain fog um, drugs was actually, the, they stopped the, the study, because, the trial, because it was coming up with severe side effects and absolutely no efficacy, no impact. So currently, there's no drug anywhere in the, in the regulatory pipeline to treat brain fog. PBM's the only thing out there. So, other areas. Back in 2019, the, multiple, the Multinational Association for the Support of Care in Cancer came up with an endorsement that PBM as a pretreatment uh, to the throat and mouth area will prevent the side effects of cancer chemotherapy. If, if you've ever had a loved one uh, go through heavy duty cancer chemotherapy, basically, uh, it starts to create sores in the mouth. And if you, in the most severe case, it's called oral mucositis, where literally one of two things has to happen. Either you have a feeding tube because you can no longer eat, or you have to stop the, the chemotherapy in order to recover, which point cancer progresses. It's a horrible condition. And so by using it as a prophylactic, PBM uh, prevents all this. So, once again, you're looking at uh, how horrible it can get. And, then, and so PBM has become this great uh, mechanism where it's now being, it literally, every um, oncology uh, association and every other endocrinology association that, has, that is treating cancer patients have all endorsed this. So the three main ones that, that we work with uh, you got the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. They were actually one of the first ones to work on this. They've treated almost 3,000 cancer patients uh, to prevent uh, the uh, cancer side effects. West Virginia Ca uh, Cancer Institute in Morgantown, and then St. Jude is probably our crown jewel. The fact that it is safe enough for pediatric cancer patients. In all three cases, it is now part of their standard order set. and so. For those of you who are into, you know, affiliated with hospitals, to have a, a new technology and a new procedure become part of a standard order set is a big deal. And this has just happened in the last year. So. 
Okay, so one of the other major areas is wound healing. We're working with a lot of veterans on this. We're working with uh, a number of hospitals on this. So in this case, uh, this is again, in this is a Thor unit for, for, made out of England. And so this is actually a, a dean of a medical school, actually uh, uh, the uh, uh, Midwestern here in Arizona. Um, and she had a compound fracture. And so she applied the light and you can see the results after only five weeks. Again, the, the beauty of all this is that PBM, because it is literally rebuilding cellular function at the subatomic level, you can get this kind of results. We've actually had throughout the world where people have started to use this for severe burn victims and the same kind of situation. You know, with a burn victim, you have to have skin grafts, you have to worry about um, you know, infection. There's always usually uh, some form of scarring. And there's time and time again, when you start to apply PBM to burn victims, you can't tell which hand or part of the body um, was burned, just like in this case with the, uh, with the fracture. So in this case, this is a, uh, a t Dr. Kerber out of Toronto. He has a unit uh, that still uses uh, laser, because again, we're getting into the issue here of some PBM devices are strong LEDs, others are, st are lasers, his is a laser. And what he's found, and this again, we've seen this in a number of, of both veterans hospitals and hospitals around the country and around the world, is that diabetic ulcers are horrible things. Usually it ends up with an amputation of the foot. And, or, you know, literally months, 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 even years where the wound won't heal, or if it heals, it's you know, a very painful process. So here, after seven weeks, a foot that would have otherwise been amputated uses Dr. Kerber's device, and this person now can walk on two legs as opposed to uh, the, uh, so. So looking at some of the other mechanisms of action, this is actually a, one of the more famous uh, studies that was done several years ago dealing with PBM dealing with uh, pain. Pain management is a big deal. Again, it's an inflammation. You unclog the electron transport chain. Inflammation goes away. Pain goes away. This crossover study shows two very interesting things. Number one, that the cumulative effect, if you look at those, those two things, one group was treated placebo, one group was treated with a PBM, and then they switch. And look what happens. The group that shifts from placebo to PBM catches up with the other group. The other group, when PBM has been, is stopped and a placebo is put in its place, the pain is still gone. Because unlike drugs that basically mask the symptoms, PBM truly heals. And the other beauty is there's that not only the cumulative effect, but the residual effect. So this chart and the one Next to it here, this dealing again with post-operative pain and the use of opioids versus, uh, uh, or placebo versus PBM treatment. What we started doing several years ago was working with the Health and Human Services Pain Management Task Force to uh, look at the fact that you're not replacing drug addiction with light addiction. PBM literally, because it is fundamentally at the subatomic level, healing the body, healing the, the every cell, you are weaning people off of treatment. So if it's an acute condition, eventually you can walk away from PBM. If it's a chronic condition or a degenerative condition, then what you're dealing with is it may be something where you're being treated three times a week, and then a few months later you're being treated Couple, once a week, a couple times, more months, once a month. So in other words, you, the cumulative effect and the residual effect of PBM, you basically can wean back either completely because of an acute condition or wean back to a much more manageable situation of, the, uh, of PBM. So because of this, we've gotten a number of major breakthroughs in just the last few months. 
the American Dental Association now has formally endorsed PBM as a standard of care for oral conditions. The Journal for America, uh, the American Medical Association has formally endorsed PBM for pain management. The Center for Disease Control, and this is where our, as a foundation we literally testified before their board of scientific advisors time and time again that uh, we convinced them that if you're looking, and they, you know, this, this last uh, February they issued their new opioid uh, guidelines for prescriptions, and they actually put forward that PBM is part of their preferred non-pharmacological alternative to opioids. Major, absolutely major. And then the gold ticket here, the brass ring. The VA has formally recommended the use of PBM for the treatment of traumatic brain injury and CTE, which is you know chronic tra traumatic encephalosophy. And so this is huge. What we basically had is, in this case, this is v -Lite. It's It's a kind of an interesting mechanism. It goes over the head, and it's uh, made up in Toronto. And what they found was you know, they did a study with about 214 veterans at the Boston VA, and they found that it absolutely calmed them in terms of, and, and treated and actually cured them of traumatic brain injury. It actually unscrambled their brain in terms of the CTE. Th this, this results was echoed in similar trials at Salt Lake City VA and at Denver VA. And so, and, and also both the Denver, actually the Salt Lake City and the, Den and the Boston VA are also treating NFL players for CTE. So this is huge because we're bringing veterans' li lives back. And so here is part of their, um, uh, the VA's endorsement of this. And the beauty is that uh, in doing this, we found that the moment that you start to put PBM, you know, red near-infrared light, into the brain cavity, you're also starting to successfully treat Parkinson's. And so we have time and time again results where people, and, and this is actually being done a lot within the dental community, you know, if a person has a Parkinson's issue, you can't even fill a ca cavity. You can't even put an Novocaine shot in because the person is moving around. It's calming them enough where they're able to treat them for different conditions, especially in the mouth. So major, major pro progress with Parkinson's. As a brilliant scientist who's one of the world's leading Parkinson's experts, uh, Anne Liebert out of Sydney, Australia. And she is doing breakthrough uh, st research on this. And what she's also found in coordination with the Veterans Administration is that it's helping calm PTSD. In fact, they're now using, especially at the Boston VA, they're pre-treating veterans with PTSD before they come further into the hospital complex to even have a checkup. Because again, the neurological calming that occurs with PBM is helping them get treatment. Now the other beautiful part of all this is that, you know, we're all familiar with Moore's Law. It's actually working on PBM as well. The, the devices are getting cheaper, they're getting better, and so the result is, is that some of these devices are now, that are medical grade, are now down to under $5,000, some down to less than 2000 So what's happening is, and this is happening primarily in these three hospitals I was mentioning, Salt Lake City, Denver, and Boston, they're handing out um, these devices, because some of these are, very, are, are getting smaller, so that the veterans can take the device home and be treated. So instead of, especially in the mountain states, having to come all the way into Denver, all the way into Salt Lake City, they can take this device home. These devices are very easy to use, because most cases you just turn them on, turn them off. Some of them have, most of them have some sort of uh, timing mechanism, because we're only talking, most cases, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes tops on a lot of these devices. So you flip it on, use it, you get minor training, put it here versus here versus here. 
And so being able to have home treatments and self-treatment and, treat, and, and more, uh, the, the ability to buy multiple devices. So before we move into the next phase, you know, we're working right now with the Veterans Affairs Committees in the House and the Senate. We're working with a number of uh, key people on the Appropriations Committee. What we want to do is get congressionally directed funding to get this into every, you know, we have 174 veterans hospitals. We're only in a dozen right now. We really would like to get them into others. Also, starting next month, we're into use or lose at the end of the fiscal year. And we all know that government bureaucrats love to spend money because they don't want to end the fiscal year with money left over. So here's an opportunity to knock on the door of a veterans hospital, knock on the door of your congressional delegation and say, spend the money this way because it's, it's getting results, it's real stuff. If anyone is interested in all the documentation we have, all the, all the clinical trial data, I have it. You know, give me your email, I will send it to you because we have all these internal documents that thankfully the VA has released to us and I would love to get these into everyone's rights into the hands so that we can actually make something really wonderful happen. So, the other pieces to this is the PBM Foundation is based currently at, uh, at Shepherd University in West, West Virginia. And so we have a global center of excellence. And within the center of excellence, we have received substantial private and public funds to do two very important things. The first one is because you have so many red light devices, it's really almost the Wild West out there. A lot of devices are uh, over promise, under deliver. Many devices are from China, which means they break down and they're again, under deliver. So we want to build consumer confidence, not just among individuals, but facilities, among physicians. So we have set up a testing protocol where we're beginning to test devices to make sure that they are delivering the dosage, in the right part of the spectrum and the right part of, uh, and, and the right joules per centimeter square so that uh, people know that certain devices really are what they say they are. The other thing, which is uh, also a, a major breakthrough this last year, we're building a series of online learning modules. We have the first three done. We have that deal with just general introduction to PBM. We're also focusing on oral mucositis because that's got the strongest uh, clinical evidence. But we're going to probably have modules dealing with wound healing, with um, uh, pain management and with the neurological conditions. We are, there's over 800 nursing schools around the country. Shepherd University is the first nursing school to incorporate PBM as a graduation requirement. We want to take that requirement to every other nursing school in this country. And so, once again, we are in the process of, of getting that word out so we can hopefully seed the clouds so the next generation of of nurses uh, are using it either as an, getting it as an elective, a certificate, or like at Shepherd University, a fundamental graduate requirement for their degree. So things are really happening from last year to now. It's like just a lot of pieces are falling into place, which is an exciting time for those of us who are, who've spent so many years trying to make this thing happen. And the beauty is, as I said, as we've been speaking here, somebody's life's been saved, somebody's life's been uh, improved. And it's just, uh, it, it allows, it gives all of us a chance to you know, wake up every morning and know we're gonna be, is a better day because PBM is out there. So I thank you much. This is real quick. Uh, has it been used, say, for Alzheimer's or others like? They are. Like we're starting it? to uh, get some work done on it. So the early signs are it's going to it's it's helpful. We're not we don't have this as strong a clinical evidence yet, but we are. It's an area that we're pursuing. Scott, you mentioned autism in one of your slides. What's the relationship there? How does that work? 
it's another one of these things where uh, anything neurological can be repaired by PBM. So again, just like with um, with some of the other things, you know, we the clinical evidence, the clinical trials are are still in their infancy, so to speak. So it, there's so some of these again areas like oral mucositis, pain management, wound healing, uh, TBI, CTE, incredibly strong clinical evidence of efficacy, major papers, major trials, major studies, some of these others still very early on. Hi, Scott. I was in an auto accident last year. I still have some pretty severe pain in my neck, in my back. And while you were talking, I went on to Amazon and looked at some of the devices, and they mm -hmm. tend to be 50 to 150 dollars but you were talking about some of those you get what you pay for right so <laughs> there uh, are a I'd couple be, i can recommend yeah I, I i'd love to talk with you afterwards mm -hmm. about where i can find uh devices there are, there are really some work. there are some very inexpensive consumer ones that actually do measure up and so but the, but the other is also you know if you have um, a lot of chiropractors use this use these devices um, dentists are using them all the time so the key is, is also you know, maybe getting an assessment that way, but there is a couple really good ones on, on the Amazon that are, are affordable and actually do what they say they do. Thank you. Have you done any studies on uh, what's called reflex sympathetic dystrophy or chronic regional pain syndrome? What these are is the, if you get a pain, say, in your neck, it doesn't go away, it gives it to a positive feedback loop to where it just gets worse and worse and worse. And right now, ablation therapy, cold heat, is how they're treating it. And I'm just curious if you had experience with um, that. I'm not familiar with that specific one, but if you want to give me your card, I'll put you in touch with, I said, our trustee, Bob Bowen, that, that does uh, deal with a lot of pain management issues, and we could maybe at least, he could probably put you in the right direction. Okay, thank you. All right.